stumbled upon a Facebook chat uh, on a forum. I can't remember which one. Um, and people were arguing over an AIS versus a radar. And I would say the vast majority of that group, that users, uh, have sort of a predisposition to buy a radar if they are going to get anything over uh, over an AIS. Now, of course, the two tools are different. They're, they don't do exactly the same thing, uh, but both tools are used to, they can be used to deconflict with traffic or uh, they can be used to, uh, well, actually the AIS only has that function. Like it just deconflicts you from other big traffic. And of course it requires uh, at least a boat that's transmitting with a boat that has a receiver in order to function at all. Uh, and of course, not all boats have the AIS system on board, where the argument is the radar will detect all boats and will also help you navigate finding your channel markers and all that kind of stuff if the, if the weather is bad. Now, I approach this from a perspective of a cruising boat. So I have a cruising sailboat. I've left uh, upstate New York on Lake Champlain in 2013. Uh, I've been traveling ever since for the last nine years. Uh, so I've done the East Coast uh, three or four times on this boat, probably another two or three times on friend's boat. I can't remember exactly. Uh, I have an Atlantic crossing from Sicily to Gibraltar to the Azores to Newfoundland to New York. Uh, and, uh, and I've passed also the Panama Canal. I went to the Galapagos Island and I've done all of California south of Los Angeles and the, the Sea of Cortez in the last few years. In all of that, in all of these travelings, as a cruising sailboat that is cruising in tropical weather most of the time, uh, though I've done the East Coast, which is not tropical in November and, and October up in New York, uh, you know, there, there's actually like probably of all this, like two, two situations, maybe three days that I remember ever kind of wanting a radar because I was in like bad weather, low visibility situation, and I, and, uh, and I wish, and, and with some, you know, questionable traffic from boats that were not AIS equipped, and, uh, and that I had wished that I had a radar. So for me, I mean, I would pick an AIS, even just an AIS receiver, over installing a radar. Now, don't get me wrong, if you can have both on your boat, and you can be equipped and, and keep both tools functioning, it's better to have both, there's no doubt about that. But the window of opportunity for me to use a radar, and the Atlantic crossing I've done was on a friend's boat, which had a radar, which basically we never used. And we actually went from uh, you know Gibraltar to the Azores and then to Newfoundland, which is kind of the North Atlantic. And then there was one day in there when we went from uh, uh, Newfoundland down to uh, um, Cape Cod, uh, where, you know, we kind of used the radar and we were trying, you know, we were doing the best we could to deconflict with other boat with radar. Now, as far as deconflicting with other boat, the AIS is a much more precise tool in order to tell you where you are, where that other boat is going, where your trajectories are going to intersect. If you're going to be inside that bubble, you're going to also get on the AIS the call sign of the other boat, which tells you like precisely this is the boat I'm calling where the radar is not gonna give you that off the bat. Like it, it, anyway, the radar I used on that boat, it was a Raymarine unit, uh, fairly recent. And I mean, you, you kind of see the radar echo of that big ship, but you don't know what the call sign is. So in order to come back on the radio and try to chart, uh, um, you know, try to deconflict the, the, your trajectory with the other boat, uh, or just advising them that you're, you intend to stay on their port or you intend to deviate 10 degrees uh, your course in order to avoid collision, just to give them a heads up of what you're going to do. I mean, the radar doesn't help that much that way. Now, the other use of radar, which is kind of, for me, a bit, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, something weird is people are talking, and I know it's not weird for the maritime, the, the, the Navy people, uh, but using a radar for navigation for me is something that I know can be done. Uh, but coming from, I come from the military airplane world. I used to fly C-130s in Afghanistan, and I, it's like we had a weather radar in the plane. And it was just that; it was a weather radar, so it was useful for us to uh, just see 
what uh, the weather was going to be like a little bit ahead of us. But most of the time where we were flying, or when you're flying into like a dense area, you'll be in touch with a ground controller, which has like a way more uh, high performance radar and has access to all the tools to give you what the weather is ahead. So you're, you're able to actually just pick your route through weather without using that weather radar. So the weather ra radar would just be useful if you'd be like in a super remote place where uh, ATC services would not be available and then you, you would fall back on weather radar. So that's my sidetrack with military aviation. We never use the radar for navigation. We have procedural navigation, we have like instrument navigation and we have GPS and uh, inertial navigations on planes which all allow us to know exactly where we are and what we're doing and where we're gonna land. So all of that makes, you know, trying to fly off a radar very um, not useful. So now, now I understand that these channels markers, like they uh, on a sailboat or any, uh, on any boat, you're coming into a harbor, you're gonna see the ch channel markers on the radar come with an echo because they're designed that way, which is all great and fine and dandy. What all I'm saying is, if you're putting yourself in a, in a in sort of a cruising situation, why would you be out in that bad weather anyway? Now, if you come from a big, large crossing, like I've done crossings of 3,500 miles solo on my boat, now, you don't pick the day that you're gonna make landfall, and then when, you're, when you wanna make landfall, if there's a fog bank there, you're probably gonna wanna just come in uh, in, in order to just like get some rest because you've been out at sea for 31 days, which, you know, now the fog situation did not present itself when I came to San Diego from the Galapagos Island on my boat, and I did that all single-handing one hawk. I mean, you can always wait for the radar, the, the, the fog to lift. Uh, now, if you're on a more local trip, you have access to very high-end, decent weather. You know that there's not going to be fog or you know that there's not going to be low visibility. And if there is low visibility, you can always choose to not go out in that situation. So again, the question is, if you have a cruising boat, should you get a radar or an AIS? And the underlying is, to, to me, the underlying thinking is that you would get only one of the two and which one would you get first? My answer is I would get the AIS first any day. I don't see why I, uh, I would get a radar on a cruising boat. I mean, I mean, if I had unlimited funds, I'd, buy, I'd have a radar on board. And I'd, like I say, there, there is a time and a place where a radar can be very useful. Uh, I don't, I'm not denying that. And you know, if you have unlimited funds, please get, you, you know, you get both tools, it's great. But if you're gonna get only one of the two, my advice is get an AIS. It's a much more precise tool. It's much more easy to use. It's something that you'd be using all the time. If you, if you, if you wanna deconflict with another boat that has AIS, you're gonna both see your call signs on there. If every boat out there starts having AIS, both receiving and transmitting, we're actually like, improving our situational awareness over, let's say, what a radar would provide by a, a huge margin. So uh, now, the, uh, you know, the other thing with a radar is it's gotta be manned, like you, you're constantly adjusting the gain on it in order to like weed out the, the waves, but still pick up the boats. And it's, I don't know, like to me, it's an old system. It, like I say, it's got a time and a place. It's got some use, it's some usefulness. It does things that an AIS would not do but I just see an AIS as a way more useful tool uh, for a cruising boat, particularly a cruising boat that's gonna end up in, in the tropics at some point. Uh, I mean, if you have a choice between the two, get an AIS and forget about the radar. That's my take.